Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's The Q at the HP Vertica Big Data Conference 2014. Brought to you by HP. With your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. Here live in Boston, Massachusetts, this is HP Vertica Big Data Conference. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Name. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. Our next guest is Jordan Chernev, who's a system architect at Wayfair.com. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me, guys. Um, great to have you on. Want to talk about some data in action, talk about how you guys are using the technology uh, to make, change your business. But first, explain to the folks, what is Wayfair? What do you guys do? So Wayfair is, a, is an actual e-commerce platform for uh, home, office, furniture. It's been around since 2002. Uh, it actually didn't used to be Wayfair. It was, like, it was CSN stores at the time, so we were about 200 different websites. Um, in 2011, we had a big strategic initiative push towards consolidation of all these stores. And once we did that, we combined everything together under the flagship umbrella of Wayfair.com. We and also have uh, three more additions uh, under our uh, portfolio of websites. Uh, we have jossinmain.com. We also have All Modern, and uh, we have uh, All Modern Baby. How many brands did you guys consolidate into Wayfair? What was the number? I think it was about 200, 200 plus. 200 plus, yeah. but they, they all have separate siloed architectures, different sites, different technologies. Yeah, absolutely. Especially web-based, right? Yes. So I think one of the main uh, initiatives that we wanted to do that is we wanted to provide a unified customer experience for shopping across different websites at the time. And we wanted to bring a, a platform where people can just go and say, hey, I'm looking for this particular type of furniture, be it home, office, business, everything. And that was, that was the main drive for that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I didn't even know you were way, you were never Wayfair, right? <laughs> to me, it was always Wayfair, and you guys are obviously specializing in sort of anything home, really, and like say office, but so, how do you position, compete against, differentiate from the big whale in the retail business, which is Amazon? You presume like everybody else, you got an Amazon war room. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit, because that's a real driver of your business mm -hmm. and pressures you as an infrastructure pro. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, everything that we've been doing as a, as a company since the early uh, days uh, has been very data driven, very data focused. So every single business decision that we've tried to make as an organization has relied itself on data. Uh, we have this concept of data democracy internally. So uh, this kind of touches a little bit on uh, the concept of self-service BI. We believe in every single person from any point of the business, be it an engineer or be it a, a somebody in say in a category management, everybody has actual tangible access to all the data and all the metrics that we have collectively as an organization. So that type of self-service BI drives very small uh, department level decisions all the way up to strategic initiatives. So that kind of like, you know, helps us drive uh, growth uh, across the board and we've been growing 50% year over year since 2002. How does a, a, a business user interact with the, with the data? Is it, you know, through some kind of visualization tools? Is it through spreadsheets? Is it through a system that you've developed? Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit. Okay. I love that concept of self-service BI, but I'm a skeptic. <laughs> Definitely, uh, it's it's actually uh, been a been a platform that has been in development and constant evolution ever since 2010. Uh, and before that, our data sets uh, did not include anything in terms of big data because a we weren't at the level of organizational uh, need uh, to capture that information at the time, and b uh, we didn't actually start looking at specializing our data stores. So around that time we started looking into more specialized technologies for analytics. Uh, uh, at the time, we looked at IBM Ethesa because that was probably one of the flagship technologies in 2010. It was just starting to become a, a thing in terms of MPP. You started hearing people talk about that as a term, and we started looking into that. Uh, as, as we progressed and as other technologies started to become more and more sporadic uh, and actually more prevalent, I'm sorry, uh, we started looking at uh, other things like uh, Apache Hadoop, uh, we started looking at more specialized, common oriented stores like HP Vertica. So we're just looking to elevate our game from an infrastructure standpoint. Now going back to your question, in terms of how do the business users interact with that data, 
that is very uh, Excel spreadsheet driven. We use uh, Microsoft Analysis Services web stack. We also have a, lot of, a visualization tool in the face of Tableau, which we think is probably one of the best out there in the market. Okay, so you've developed a capability to essentially put data into a spreadsheet so any business user can, can utilize it and then manipulate it any way they see fit. And then the users are trained on Tableau as well? So the way that we approach this is, uh, I want to clarify a little bit in terms of the Excel spreadsheet. Mm. Excel spreadsheet manipulation in, in interaction is about 90 to 95% of all use cases for every single business user in Wayfair. Right. You, have, you have exceptions in terms of, hey, this is, this is something that people can actually look at in terms of uh, dashboards. And we have specialized dashboards that look at particularly interesting business metrics that are real time or near real time that people go to, to those dashboards for. So we leave the, we leave the design and uh, of those dashboards to our specialized teams in terms of business intelligence, and those guys are doing a great job of creating and maintaining those, but the actual business users will be interacting with those dashboards at the very end. I see, and then I wonder if you could talk about sort of, you mentioned Hadoop, did it, did it start with Hadoop, or did it start with the sort of the Natiza Enterprise Data Warehouse platform, and then why did you move off of Natiza to Vertica? What was, what was the driver there? Yeah, I, uh, so it's actually an interesting story and I'll walk you through the evolution of, of our platform a little bit. So we had a, we had a need to capture uh, unstructured data in very large volumes, very large quantities at a very high speed. Uh, so I think that's what, what most people may be referring to, uh, to that is, uh, is a traditional clickstream data set. So you're basically trying to get an understanding of, hey, how are people interacting with the website? How can we do things like A-B testing? How does this impact revenue? What are, what, are, what are the next business features or priorities that we want to focus on in terms of making the website more usable, making the website be more friendly? How do we actually help customers find the things that they, they're looking for? So Hadoop kind of like, you know, came around that. We wanted to get a lot more and deeper understanding of, hey, how, how does this actually work? How, how are people interacting with the website itself? So we started augmenting the existing IBM Netizen infrastructure with, with Hadoop. And at some point, maybe like you know, 12 or 15 months into it, realized that now we have a tremendous amount of growth in data that we need to look at. And based on how fast the business was growing, we were more or less looking at uh, vastly overgrowing our existing infrastructure <laughs> in terms of MPP at that point. So this is when we started looking at, hey, how do we make the next step? How do we make the next leap in terms of both strategic like, you know, positioning for, for Wayfair and how do we make the, our analytical stack like, you know, better and faster for both people who are using it and people who are working on it. So you do, your existing platform just couldn't handle the volume. Correct. How much data were you talking about? Uh, at a time, we're looking at, at about 30 terabytes. of so this is just purely structured data uh, at that point. Right now we're looking more at about, I would say, 60 terabytes, and I think that's growing day by day. Uh, obviously, like, you know, when you're growing, your, your, your graph of growth goes like this. But it's not an enormous amount of data, right? right. I mean, but, but, so what was the bottleneck? The bottleneck was more or less, uh, we, were, we were trying to solve problems for speed, delivery of data, how fast can, can we materialize data capture, the actual data point that gets captured on the website to an actual business insight that people can use and make strategic decisions on a daily basis. So time to delivery, if, if you want to like, you know, frame yep. it that way was, was where we wanted to focus our time on. Things like real-time analytics or near real-time analytics are, are more or less a better fit for a technology like, like Vertica. So could you compress that time to deliver. Absolutely. And, and the Hadoop infrastructure that we're using, was it sort of a open source Apache Hadoop? Was it a vendor distribution? So we, or is it? we looked at different options at the time. Uh, right now we've, uh, we're using Cloudera, uh, but this doesn't mean that we're not necessarily looking at other alternatives. But uh, at some point we'll, we'll probably like, you know, reevaluate and maybe uh, think are you, about Are you paying for it or are you using a free version? We're using the open source version of it okay. right now. So yeah. you guys have a lot of funding. You raised over $300 million in venture funding. Your revenues are awesome um, in terms of the, the, the e-commerce piece. We had Jim on earlier. Mm -hmm. you, you, yeah. E-commerce e is the hottest trend, retail is booming, big data on the web certainly has been around, predictive analytics around ads and doing all that stuff's great. But I got to ask you about the next wave that's coming, which is the mobile surge. Mm -hmm. um, how are you guys dealing with the mobile 
in particular, because that's going to be certainly a traffic driver mm -hmm. in terms of user experience, mm -hmm. uh, one for growth, traffic, and also user acquisition. But how are you using the data in the mobile use case, both for user experience and for some of those collective intelligence, predictive analytics decisions? Absolutely. So we, to give you guys a, a background, we already have a couple of mobile apps. One of them is the Jossin main app that allows people to shop online for our flash sales uh, sites. We just launched the Wayfair app a couple of months ago. Uh, so we already captured that uh, amount of data to an extent. Right now we have a project of collecting and integrating da that data to the overall data set that we already have. So we don't want to think of that data as an, a vacuum. We want to like, you know, think of, hey, this is just another channel. How can we look at those things holistically across the board? So that's, that's one of the uh, next projects that we'll be working on in the fall. And how far along is that mobile initiative? Is it proof of concept? Is it uh, some penetration out there with users? Uh, I actually don't have like, you know, good data. numbers to give you, but I know that uh, the Jocelyn Main app has been around for about 18 months okay, to date, yeah. and I know we have a pretty good uh, penetration in terms of like, you know, market. Uh, I yeah. can probably the demographics like, tend to be on the younger side with the mobile, uh, especially on news and content, obviously with you know, things like the buzz feeds and the social networks, but a lot of the older folks still aren't seeing that conversion uh, for the older demographics. You guys tend to skew north of 30 years old in terms of demographics because of the, just the products? I, w I would say that the biggest, uh, uh, the biggest groups that, uh, at least these are the numbers that I know for Joss and Maynard, those are, those are metrics that we can, uh, we can look at. And they're usually between 30 to 45. Uh, it's my wife. <laughs> More <Okay>. or less. <laughs> <laughs> Loves Wayfair. <laughs> Does she use it? Yeah. Yeah, Linda's all over there. <laughs> I mean, they have, they have a ton. They sold 10 million, what's it, couches I heard? Is that story? <laughs> yeah, we have a product catalog of uh, five, five million plus products uh, as, of, as of today. And What's the biggest surprise that, that, that caught you uh, in a, from a technology perspective? Could be good or bad, like a big, something that you didn't expect to happen in, in your career recently. I would say it's the rate of growth. We're overgrowing solutions like, you know, super quick and we always have to be a lot more proactive in terms of, hey, how do we, how do we think about the next 18 months? Usually when you, when you think about those things, it's, most people are like, hey, we're going to build this and it's going to last us maybe three to five years. With us, our, our lifespan is way more contracted and you always have to be on your toes and looking for, hey, how do we make the next leap? Yeah. How do we grow 10x, 20x? How diverse is the, the data? I, I presume you're combining multiple data sets, certainly more than, more than two. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Specifically, you know, how, how diverse is the data and, and what about data integration challenges and data quality challenges? How are you handling those? Yeah, so you're touching up on something interesting that is a very traditional problem with uh, data warehousing is that is integration. Uh, we have our own custom built tool that extracts data from relational databases and puts it automatically on the fly into, into our vertical platform. We do the same thing with uh, the bigger data sets that we have uh, within Hadoop uh, at that point. And it's, uh, it's, an it's an interesting challenge, definitely, but I think we're in a good stable position where we are, we're mature in, in, that, in that process. Uh, in terms of diversity, uh, I think we're combining very traditional business problems that have been around for a while. Uh, that which are more central to enterprise data warehousing, like BI, is just a challenge of hey, how do we how do we take this like you know traditional data set and take it like you know new new data set that is a, the the, the clickstream data set, the unstructured one, and you combine and enrich in those. We're also looking at other options like you know, hey, uh, network traffic. Uh, how can we predict like you know specific net network failures? How does it relate to revenue? But uh, the biggest challenge with those data sets is trying to come up with reducing the signal to noise ratio because we have way too much data and how, what, what is the meaningful piece <laughs> of it at that point? You need to extract the signal from the noise. That's what we're here at theCUBE. We want to follow up with you, George. It's been a great interview. Again, this is a great example here at the HP Vertica event where you know, the big data impact is really not about the vendors, but it's the people using the data. You guys are a great example of at scale, e-commerce, retail, and, and just beginning. I mean, the revenues are good, you're funded, great valuation, success. But the work is just getting started with mobile. Don't only imagine the internal conversations going on around that. You know, networks and all that good stuff with virtualization. So congratulations and thanks for sharing, Jordan. Here inside theCUBE, Wayfair.com, great example of consolidation of brands, one global platform unification. Really, really, this is the future. You're watching theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.